Are you ready to unleash your full potential and become unstoppable in your success and leadership? Welcome to the Unleashed and Unstoppable podcast, where we provide powerful insights and strategies for coaches, corporate leaders, and entrepreneurs. I'm Alexanne Carter. And I'm Carol Register, and we're certified master neuro coaches who are passionate about helping you overcome your limiting beliefs and optimize your performance. Each week, we'll be sharing actionable tips and strategies using neuroscience from interviews with industry experts to solo episodes to help you live a life of power, purpose, and possibility on your own terms. Join our community of like-minded individuals. Hit subscribe now and let's be unleashed and unstoppable together. Hi, Carol here. I am so glad you're here for part two with Dan McPherson. If you didn't catch part one last week, go back and listen. Dan is one of those rare individuals that's been such an honor to meet because of his authenticity and ability to help us to have healing. And so this is What's Your Ugly? It's a story of hope and inspiration around leadership. I can't wait till you hear it. Again, go back and listen to part one if you didn't hear it. This is part two with Dan McPherson. (laughs) Calm comes first. I love it. Calm, clarity, and focus. And if anything is not in flow along the way, you know that one of those is broken. Now, I want to know, do you use neuroscience as well? To a degree. I've studied, I've not studied it intentionally, sort of like I didn't intentionally study therapy, but as a coach, you learn a lot of pieces along the way. Yeah. And and so I I use the pieces that I've picked up. My number one gift in the world is synthesis. And mm-hmm. I, that's in my case, I define it as picking things from a hundred little places, taking a piece of each and making something better than any of them. So I have integrated a lot of neuroscience pieces. Can I quote you every fact about neuroscience? Can I tell you every one of them that's from neuroscience? No. Have I read and studied a decent amount of that area and incorporated it? Absolutely. Yeah. I know that uh, that makes a lot of sense because you stated that um, to me in our conversation previous that mental health is a big issue. And of course, coming from a background like you came from with your trauma story and with the things that led up to you, you know, not only not valuing your life, but wanting to end it. And then coming to you, the place where you are actually utilizing mental health support and techniques with the client, with your clients. Um, Would you like to speak into that more? Yeah, one of the things that I find, and we we miss this very basic connection, is that we talk about in society a work life and a personal life, but we only have one life. Well, that's true when we talk about development as well. There's business development, there's personal development, but in the end, all development is personal. Yeah, And if we don't put ourselves in a good place, if we aren't taking care of ourselves, but also if we aren't healing and understanding and helping ourselves, then we will be consistently doomed to repeat patterns that we've had in our life for years. And we will very likely not escape the trajectory that we could have been placed upon by someone else. Yeah. And I, I find when I struggle, there are three questions I that I like to ask. And one of those is, what am I meant to understand from this situation? Which is that that's the cycle breaking question. And just for, for reference, I also ask, does this serve me? And who am I becoming? And it goes back to that identity piece. But we those, so those yeah. three, I find help can help guide you through a lot of different struggles. But when you're talking about this, this path of mental health and you recognize, okay, all development is personal. All right. All, all my life is, is personal. All Mm -hmm. right. Well, then I probably should look at the personal. Well, what does that look like? And looking at it in the mirror and saying, how do I actually respond? Not how do I wish I did? Not how do I present to others that I did? Not how I rationalize that I did? But how do I actually respond? What is really legitimately, if I'm honest, going on, even when it's scary? And then 
reaching out for the resources, looking for the resources that will support you. We're not in this alone. Relationships are everything as part of that number one core value, right? Like it, it matters, but we've got to be willing to share the ugly, like I talked about earlier, yeah. to get into the to get into that place. And that hard look in the mirror where we're being really honest, it can be tough. I draw it. I draw a parallel for you. It is tough. It, it is tough. And I, I just to, to briefly interject that, you know, quite often we're on this um, lone wolfing, as we like to put it, we're mm-hmm. on this path of being solo and thinking we have to carry it all on our shoulders and thinking we have to do it all ourselves. So it, I think it's a critical part of our self care journey to not only get to know ourselves and get to know who we are and stand grounded in that, but then also it, it's counterintuitive, isn't it? It's interesting you said it synthesis, is. but quite often, the healing journey is so counterintuitive and that it's not about us pulling ourselves up by our bootstraps and getting right. it done, right? We convince ourselves that we've got to be that that bull charging forward. I'll just put my shoulder down and charge and we keep hitting the wall. When if yeah. we lift up our head and be like, hey, anyone see a door in here? There's a, there's a door on the path out. And part of that's because we fool ourselves. There's a, there's a parallel I like to make from the land of sales. If you're going to go out and you're going to talk to somebody about sales, and I I work with all of my entrepreneurs on this particular example, but, but it builds right into the mental health illusion that we create of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And it is this, that when you go talk to somebody, if you just, it, it, like when I sold kitchens, I, I used to go into people's homes on straight commission and I would walk in and I would say, hey, how's your kitchen? And they're like, oh, it's great. You know, we think we might do something someday, but it's not that bad. Well, then I we sit down, we start talking, we get to know each other a little bit. And I start asking them questions. Oh, well, you know, what happened to this drawer over here? Oh, it broke 12 years ago. Well, what about this countertop? Well, it's the most hideous thing ever. What about under the sink? We've had a leak that went to the basement for eight years. Like, maybe it was a little worse than you were kind of willing to admit to somebody else, right? Like, you, yeah. we we do this in our Sweeping own lives. Sweeping it under the rug. <laughs> right? We, we do it in our own lives, but it's not even intentional. Like, they aren't doing that intentionally most of the time. Time. Yeah. They're doing it because we have these, we have the reality, and then we have the then we have the one step away where we turn our back on the kitchen and the kitchen no longer exists. That's what yeah. we do for mental health a lot as well. But if we turn around and look at it and right. go, oh, there is a thing here. And it's not here's the key too. It's not good or bad. Obje- it's objectively, yeah. you're not you're not broken. It's no. not good or bad. You're not wrong. You're not a bad person. Yeah. Just like if you if somebody had the sniffles, you wouldn't be like, how dare you? Right? How dare yeah. you have how dare you have gotten a cold? I can't, you're never my friend again. Like we don't do that yeah. and we shouldn't do that. We we shouldn't think that that's going to be the way it would be from a mental health perspective and a supporting ourselves perspective, also. I you know, our audience will relate very much to this. Listener, you'll relate to this because we talk about releasing judgment and having curiosity to have the awareness of what we're limited by, our limiting beliefs. And a part of it is our brain working as it should. Our brain looks at whatever is patterned into the subconscious, whatever is familiar to us, even if it's faulty, as something that it needs to protect. And the brain's job is to protect this beautiful, sophisticated automated system that we have, including all the limiting beliefs in it. And it's even giving us the neurochemicals to stay stuck until we start to face these things head on with curiosity, releasing judgment, and not in a way that where we focus on it so that it grows or where we're resisting Uh it so that it persists. We're not ruminating. We're not ruminating. We're merely pulling it out of the closet, out of the subconscious, into the cup, into the conscious mind where we can actively recode it and remove it. So yeah, I love this. It's so important. And in being willing to do that in our in our lives with all the different patterns, right? We all have yeah. patterns that that when they're hidden, they we 
might have shame or fear or whatever it is around them. And we pull them out and we go, oh, I, I can I can fix that. I, if I just move this over here. And and then there's the part of that I mentioned before, I think of recognizing that we're not broken. I mean, my my I'm also an autism advocate, right? My child and my ex are autistic. And I have learned so much in that world and go, oh, wait, it's okay if things work differently? Oh, yeah, yeah it really is. And then we figure out, well, how does that work? And what do you know? There's the source of the path forward. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. And I think that's very important. It's through our limits, our limiting beliefs that we find our truths, right? Because they're hidden right there inside of them. Well, and there's yeah. so many limiting beliefs, right? So often we hear that phrase and we tie it immediately to money. And there's actually a really cool limiting belief. I, I think you and I may have spoken about it, the 50-50 rule around money yeah, uh, and that of how we perceive money. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it, it just quickly validates that it isn't the case, but we tie them to that. But we have limiting beliefs in so many areas of our life. Yeah. I had one about travel. Yeah. I had one that, <laughs> oh, traveling a certain distance is really hard. And then I traveled that distance. I'm like, it's really easy. And then, but I still thought traveling further was hard. And then I traveled all the way around the world. And I said, Oh, travel is easy. I look at it like our brains are very, very sophisticated at the job of keeping us safe by keeping us in in whatever is familiar by protecting that automated Mm -hmm. system. So, you know, the fact that you were wanting to go travel a certain distance, your brain's like, that's not safe. That's not something we're familiar with. So it starts throwing in the limiting beliefs. And I look at limiting beliefs as covering all areas of our lives because we're integrated beings. And I look at it too, as a piece of the overwhelm factor, our, our body starts shutting down from overwhelm, but there's a, there's a phrase that I love around that, which is vague is overwhelming, specific is achievable. So when it's vague, when it feels like it's in the gray, when it feels like it's, Oh, I haven't done it. I don't understand. Then it's scary, overwhelming, shut down, be protected from when it's specific. I've seen it. I understand it. I've interacted with it. We've done something the first time. It's no, it's no longer overwhelming. Now it, yeah. now it fits on the inside of that protective barrier rather than the outside, which is where that the whole comfort zone discussion can come from probably too. Yeah. Well, actually I have a specific question around that. It's super interesting. Sure. And I hadn't heard it put that way, but you know, one of the ways that our brain does like to operate is immediately to go to the how. We don't always know the how and trying to get to the how first can actually prevent us from gaining what we want. So when you're speaking about vagueness versus certainty, what is certainty when it's not the how? Well, let let me change the word a little bit. It's vague versus specific. Okay. Okay, and, I like and I, that. And, and I say that because when we start looking for certainty, we run into a lot of different issues. For example, we're taught to make decisions when we have certainty, which is incredibly inefficient. If mm-hmm. you make a decision with 70% of the information, you will make it five times faster than if you wait until you have 90, but your success rate is only going to be about a net 5% difference. And therefore, if you mm-hmm. make decisions in your life with 70% of the info, you will actually have three to, if you do the math, you'll have three to five times as many net positive decisions. You will move immensely faster. This is how CEOs of large organizations make their efficiency in many cases. I love that. It's the Pareto principle, right? It's the power Mm -hmm. curve. It goes exponential. And, you know, it's um, something that we uh, do talk about on here on here from time to time. I have to slow myself down because I get really excited about the <laughs> um, And, you know, just the way that we're looking at something, taking it from the vague and going to the specific, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think it's so important to paint a clear picture for the, for the brain of our vision. And, right. and we do do that vision priming. What, what do you do with your clients in regard to vision and, and regard to, um, getting to the specific? 
It depends upon the situation. First, I, uh, I'll tag on to something you mentioned earlier, curiosity. I believe that curiosity is the number one individual skill in the world. If I could only improve one skill, I would be more wow. curious, ask more and better questions. And it's not even close. If you look, it's the, it cascades to everything else. I always like to look and ask, what one thing, if I do it, will make the others either easier or irrelevant? Curiosity is that in the world of skills. If you look at skill sets, I believe it's leadership. Leadership is not just the cornerstone, but it's the keystone. And so you work in those spaces and become a better leader. People say, oh, I don't want to be a leader. I had somebody the other day say, I was asked if I if I wanted to be a leader. And I said, no. And I looked at her, I said, too bad. And she said, why? <laughs> I said, because every single person's a leader. The only question is whether you're going to be good at it. So That's you determine so what your choice is within that. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about vision, we, I, I think, I tend to think of it in terms of ca having vision that we share with, whether it be our family, our team, though the people around us, whatever. We have vision for different parts of our lives. We have we have vision for where we're going to go on vacation. We have vision for what our business is going to do or become. We have vision for having a future, having future children, anything like that. And I believe that a lot of things around vision. I have like a three hour training around vision, but, but the, at its core, I would look and say, if you commit to sharing vision, like once you have a clear vision, commit to sharing it daily, weekly, monthly, you share what it's going to look like 30 days from now, every day, what it's going to look like 90 days from now, every week, and what it's going to look like a year from now, every month with everybody in that group, that vision will be immensely more likely to happen. In terms of finding your vision, look for the why behind the what. You know, you talked about mm -hmm. us wanting to know the how, but if we know the why behind the what, if we know our why, if we know our North Star in that particular endeavor, mm -hmm. then we can reverse engineer everything and we can build it with vision then strategy, then tactic, then task. In that order, I call it VSTT. Most people build the other way. Most people go through their life as like a, almost like a little Mexican jumping bean and hopping up and hoping, I hope I found the thing I'm happy. I hope I found the thing I'm happy. Hope I'm found the thing I'm happy. But if you start with the vision and build it backward, you will increase your calm and you'll make it immensely easier to have clarity and focus. What fantastic answer. And that resonates, right, listener? Doesn't that resonate so much? And, you know, looking at that why, that fuel, right? That's our fuel for keeping us going, keeps me going and motivated when the breakdowns happen or when the obstacles show up, because I can go back and I can go, what's my why? Oh yeah, this is right. why I'm doing well, this. Well, what's the it's question like we asked as a excited. kid? Why? Right? We just yeah. kept saying, why, 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 why? Why yeah. did we stop asking that? Yeah. Right. Let's let's get back to asking that because as you get those answers, you'll get those specifics. Yeah. And now and now the overwhelm decreases, calm increases. You'll find about 70% of the things I share specifically go to helping you have a state of calm, <laughs> right? <laughs> or to either get to it, come back to it, create it, or sustain it. And you know, I I've loved hearing all about um you know, the work that you do. So what is the end result when somebody comes and coaches with you? What what typically are your entrepreneurs wanting or looking for? Great question. And and I have worked with people across more than now, more than 20 industries. And I have worked with them to a wide variety of results. But the most common are that they are either looking to begin or build scale a business. And they have recognized that maybe calm is a little harder for them or that they want a clean path, but without plastic promises, right? I'm not the guy yeah. who's going to tell you, we're going to get you to a million dollars in 90 days, no matter what. I'm not the guy that's going to tell you that. I'm going to tell you, let's do the actual work. My job is to dust off the tracks and help you know what switches to throw. Mm -hmm. Your job is to put the coal in the engine. And I'm a collaborative coach, not a directive coach. So we're going to work together. And if you agree to do the thing that we talk about, you will build momentum in your life and business. You will go forward toward what your North Star is. My North Star is irrelevant. Yours is completely relevant. And I like to share the principles that are true everywhere, the practicals that are true for that person. And so what I find is that 
I've had a bunch of clients who have built businesses to multi-million dollar businesses in tiny niches. I've had clients who have doubled and tripled their businesses, but most of it is that they find calm. They work with clarity on their next steps. They then are able to focus. We help them find a way, even as I work with a lot of intuitives and creatives who are always like, oh, I don't like structure. I can't, I can't do it this way. And I say, yes, you can. But, the, but you have to have a different structure than others. And I work 90% with women who work different than the majority of men. And so in those spaces, I've learned to use that feminine energy to create a structure that works really well and feels calm. But the very first step is getting to calm. The very last step is having a lot of momentum and then cycling that in whatever it may look like for them. And that's the beauty is these principles work no matter what it is they're looking for. But mostly they start because they're not feeling calm or they feel like they've been trying a lot of different things, right? Yeah. And trying to go a lot of different directions. Yeah. <laughs> and they just don't know how to get where they want to go. They don't, yeah. they they may know step A and they may know step Z, but they don't know B to Y. Wow. That's um super powerful and exciting. And how do clients work with you? How can people connect with you? Sure. They they can connect with me in a couple of ways. Uh, the easiest is just email me, right? dmcpherson at leadersmustlead.com or message me on Facebook. That's fine. I'm there quite a bit as well. And they can work with me. One, they can find all my free content on YouTube and all that under Leaders Must Lead. But they also, uh, the entry point for the majority of of clients with me. Like I love to connect with people. So if you're listening, I want to know you. I want to know your story. I want to know your life. So just, yeah. I want to even have a conversation with you. But if you're thinking, man, I might, I might need some help from this guy. The entry point for most people is our strategic momentum coaching, which is an office hour style coaching that I make six hours a week available for the members to come and ask any questions they want about any topic. And it's proven to be incredibly powerful. It's ridiculously affordable at only $300 for three months. So it's like having a high level coach on retainer for under $100 a month. And people come and join us and connect through that but they usually start with the free content or with looking at our podcast streams are real. Wow, that's amazing. Um, and, you know, before we wrap up today, I feel like uh, I love seeing your journey from who you say you are in the beginning to where you are now, even with the obstacle of you know, going through the heart attacks and the learning journey that you're on that's fresh and new. Um, I would love for you to end just really by leaning in and telling us a little bit more about who you are right now. About who I've become? Yeah. I am, and thank you for that. I don't, I actually am not sure I've ever been asked that in that way. I like to take care of people. And I'm a people too. I truly believe that people matter most. And I also believe that we should always do the hard things if they're the right things, that we should do the things. I, I, my second core principle is always do what's right, even if it's inconvenient, being willing to make the difficult choices. But who am I really? I, I'm a guy who cares. I'm a guy who shows up. I'm a guy who has compassion. I've, I'm a guy who's discovered that not everything that I always believed is true, whether it be limiting beliefs or whether it be the existence of energy work or anything else. And so I, I've i really striven to be a guy who has strong beliefs that are loosely held, that I'm passionate about what I do and, the, and what I believe, but that I also am open and eager to learn. I've shifted from impatience to eagerness, moved out of that, that shift and replaced it not with patience, because that's not how the replacement works, but replaced it with eagerness, this understanding that I'm no longer wistful of the past or wishful for the future, but I'm excited to live in the present, that I'm living upward and outward, that I'm learning and earning the step, that I'm on that journey and that peace and that place that moves 
forward toward my North Star, which is to inspire true generational change in the world that's going to reduce these larger problems like human trafficking, hunger, poverty, racism by 15% in the next 15 years. And I'm doing that by helping a million creatives and entrepreneurs, primarily women, to actually achieve their dreams, to do that thing. And if I can be known for that as the legacy that I did everything I could to be a voice, heal with my, my words and the spaces between the words and be a voice that allowed others to achieve their dreams and have reminded others that they are valid and valuable and that they matter and that their world and their story is crucial to the existence of so many more than they realize, then I win. Wow. (laughs) Thank you for that. Thank you for being here, Dan. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, just, you know, listener, it's a joy to bring you Dan and let you hear about being in those dark places, in those ugly places and seeing that you can be in life with eagerness. Um, with living in the present and looking forward, right? Um, I'm so thankful that you joined us. We will have his information in the show notes for you. We're excited to have that there for you. And I just really appreciate uh, connecting with you and um, bringing your world to our audience. So. Thank you so much. There is always light through the darkness and dreams are always real. And I'm so grateful to be here. Oh, ciao for now. I can't wait to see you again next week, guys. So have a great week and really sit and listen to the gold nuggets here. See you soon. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Unleashed Unstoppable podcast with your hosts, Alexander Carter and Cal Register. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and review and subscribe. That's all for this episode, Wildly Ambitious Leaders. See you next week.